Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. For those of you who have been watching my other videos and who's been eagerly waiting for the new one to come out, um, well, here we are. I'm sorry we had a little break, but I think we all need a little break from time to time. So today I'm going to show you how to make a savory zucchini or courgette, if you like, roulade, and we're going to fill it with some ham and some cream cheese. And this is actually a really lovely dish. You can have it for a light lunch or a light dinner. You can um, have it when your friends are over and they will probably be impressed. And it's, it's lovely. It's got great flavor, it's light, and it's just something different. Sometimes we fancy something a bit different. So we'll be back in a minute and then I'll show you how to make it. Okay guys, let me show you what you're going to be needing for your roulade. Um, over here we've got two medium to large courgettes and um, when you weigh it out it needs to be around 570 grams. So depending on the size of courgettes you've got. Then I've got a half a cup of wheat bran, half a cup of oat bran, then I've got a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of bicarbonate. <clears throat> and at the end here I've got five eggs. If you weigh the eggs out, they are 250 grams because we get different size eggs. So there we are. So we'll start with the courgettes. I'm just going to top and tail them. I leave the skin on and I've just washed them so they're nice and clean. And then I'm going to just grate them manually on the rough side of the grater. So we'll just do the courgettes like that. Here we go. And I'll just finish that off quickly. Okay, so this is the second one. Here we go. Clean that out a little bit. Okay. So what I've done is I've put the courgette straight into a fine sieve or a colander, you know, it doesn't have to be a very fine sieve. And that teaspoon of salt, sprinkle that on top. It's not all that much, but you have to then kind of work it through. So the best is to use your hands, make sure the salt is mixed through the courgette nicely, because now the salt is going to draw out some excess moisture here. And you'll see, after half an hour, all the juices that will be in the bowl underneath. So make sure you set up your sieve over a bowl. So we're going to leave this for half an hour and then I'll show you how to put the roulade together. Okay guys, um, we're just going to start with the roulade now. So I've got the five eggs in here. I've got the electric mixer on and I'm going to beat these eggs on medium speed, even medium to high, for about three, four minutes. So it's really noisy, so we'll come back to this. Okay, guys, so that was about three minutes now. The egg, that's nice and airy, it's nice and fluffy. And that's what you want. You want a bit of air for the roulade. So we'll just take that over now. You'll hear the oven is beeping, so I've just re preheated the oven at 280 degrees. Now let's have a look here at our courgette. Okay, so you'll see there, there's liquid in the base there. Now what I'm doing, I'm squeezing the courgette really hard to get the excess moisture out of there. can use a spoon pressing down as well. I find this is actually quite a good method as well. And now once I've done that, I'm going to put it on a small towel here. You can put it on some kitchen roll if you prefer that. I find a tea towel works very well. So you'll see all that juice there is basically almost a 150 mils or something of juice. And now I'll just spread this out slightly. 
can't cover it with a towel. Just press down a bit, get even more moisture out. Just fold it over. See, towel is almost soaked. There we go. Because the more moisture is in the courgette, the heavier it is, and then your roulade won't be so light and fluffy. Brilliant. Okay, so now we can open that up again. Here we go, that's nice and dry. Now in a mixing bowl, we're going to put that courgette in there. Here we go. And you can just loosen that up a bit. We'll add our oat bran. Here we go. And our wheat bran. A little bit of the bicarb, a teaspoon of bicarb. Now in the past I've added a little bit of Parmesan cheese, but if you're following your dukan very strictly, I wouldn't add that. If you've got a bit of fat-free grated cheese, you can add a little bit of that in there as well. It helps to hold it together. So at this point you can now season it. Um, not too much salt because the, there's still a bit of salt left behind in the courgette there. But um, if you wanted a bit of pepper or other spices, you can add them now. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour the egg in there. Still got a nice amount of bubbles on there. And I'm going to just fold it in now. So try not to knock all the air out that we've just been putting in. So there we go, gentle, see, and now I'll show you the tray that I'm going to be using. The tray I've got here is about 24 by 36 centimeters and it needs to be at least a centimeter deep. Um, it could be deeper but this is a good size. And now some greaseproof paper. I've slightly oiled the tray ever so slightly and you just make sure you've got a bit of overhang of your paper on all four sides. Now we're going to just pour the mixture in. Here we go. And you can use a little scraper or palette knife if you wish to spread it out nicely. I'm just spreading it with a spoon here for now. Turn the tray. Just like so. Here we go. So you just want to smooth it out so it's quite level. Here we go. Because that will be just for visual effects here. There we go. So you'll see it is literally a centimeter thick in the tray here. Now with a little bit of bicarb it might rise ever so slightly. There we go. So this is ready to go in the oven. Let's put that in the oven then. I'll put that in the middle of the oven. 180 for about 20 minutes, maybe 22. So we'll come back to that when that's cooked. Okay guys, um, so this has now been in the oven for about 20 odd minutes. When you press on it, it's kind of bouncy, so it's cooked. It's also coming loose from the sides here, so that's a cue that it's cooked. Switch this off here. And let's have a look what we're going to do now. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just open it up. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put that damp cloth over it. The one we used for the courgette earlier. And
and I'm going to lift it out of the tray. There we go. Okie dokie, let's have a look here. And now the idea is to roll it up in the towel. I'll show you something first, what we're going to do. Okay, so what I do is I make a little cut about a centimeter away from the edge. And this is a little trick you learn when you do professional baking. And it just makes it easier to roll the Swiss roll so I don't cut it to the end and I don't cut it all the way through just a couple of millimeters deep and it just makes it slightly easier to roll so what I'm going to do now is we're going to try and roll it up there we go Mm, might have to wait a couple of minutes. I might flip it over. Let's have a look here. There we go. Got your towel underneath it now. Let's see if that works a bit better. So the bit I've been cutting is this side. And then you just roll it up like you would a Swiss roll. So I'm rolling it while it's still really hot. Here we go. And I'm going to leave this now on the counter to cool off in the towel till it's completely cold and then we will do the filling for it okay guys so this has now been cooling off for a couple of hours I'm just going to use my piece of paper that we were baking the roulade on and we're going to unroll it now so you can see I'm going to be careful but by keeping it in the damp towel you shouldn't have too many cracks there we go so that first little bit is curled in a bit, but don't worry about that. That's fine. I might just roll it up again. There we go. Take the towel out. There we go. All right. So now we're going to need a couple of things. Okay, so in the bowl here for the filling, I've got 100 grams of quark and 100 grams of cream tea. So I'm just going to mix that together. And then you can add any seasonings you like. I'm going to add a bit of fresh chili, just a tablespoonful of chili. And I've got some lovely fresh dill as well. So just add some dill in there. And let's give that a little mix. There we go. Now you can use any fillings you like, but it's good to have a little bit of cream cheese as part of it to make it nice and moist. And then what else I've got here, I've got 200 grams of sliced cooked ham, and I've gone for the slightly thicker slices, but you can use thin ones as well. So let's fill the roulade then. Here we go. Just going to put the filling on. You can use a little bit less or a bit more. It's your own preference. So I'm not going to go right up to the edge. Stop just before I get to the very edge. Put a little bit in the fold there. And just keep spreading. There we go. Try 
trying to be equal everywhere. Nice. And now I'm going to put some ham on. Now it's good not to have the ham towards the end too much. So you can start at the very beginning where we're going to be rolling it. Turn over. There we go. And then I'm going to just cut this one in half. over here yep so I've not even used all the ham so you might not need 200 grams maybe a bit less so now we're going to roll up the roulade I'm just going to move it a bit closer to the edge there we go so with your paper you just press down and keep rolling And this is why I didn't put it all the way to the edge because the ham does tend to move up a bit. Now you'll see the base of the roulade must always be at the bottom. Move up, move it back a bit. There we go. So it needs to sit at the bottom. And now you're going to roll your paper around it so it doesn't dry out. You can also use cling film, it's also good. You make it nice and tight. Keep an eye on where the bottom of the roulade is. So the bottom is here, so we'll leave that at the bottom. And then your end bits, tuck them in nice and tight. And you can just tighten them a little bit. You can put an elastic on if you want. And now I'm going to put this in the fridge just to rest a little bit. It can be an hour or two and then it's ready for slicing or you can even leave it overnight if you want. So we'll be back to slice it up so you can see what it looks like. Okay guys, the roulade's now been in the fridge for about two hours, maybe a little bit longer. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I've got two chopping boards here today, so bear with me. Just move that off the paper. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to really literally cut it in half. And I've seen in the past that you can get more or less 10 good size slices out of one half. So you can see there what it looks like. There's a small gap between the ham and the roulade. So if you don't want that to happen, you need to put cream cheese on both sides of the ham. Then the whole thing sticks together. But um, it's still beautiful, I think. It's still lovely. So I've got a nice sharp knife here. We're going to just slice a few slices. And I've got a platter here that we can put them on. So I normally do it about a centimeter thick. You can, of course, do them any thickness you like. And I normally serve about three slices in a portion. But the amount of oat bran in there is very little. So I will calculate exactly how many slices adds up to one portion of your daily oat bran. Here we go. So you'll see here, look here, three, six, nine, twelve slices out of one half. So that's a, a lot. So I've got a nice little platter here, some fresh um, lettuce, a bit of red cabbage and some carrot. And now I'm just going to put our roulade on there. There we go. And then what you can do to present it, you can open the slices up slightly. Let's see. There we go. So it's really lovely. You'll see the roulade isn't dry at all. 
it's very nice and moist so you don't need to serve it with any sauces or dips or anything like that it's literally ready to go I'll put a little tomato on the side there for color and the other thing you can do is you can do different fillings you can change the ham to some smoked salmon and that works very well as well so you can play around with different fillings There we go, all done. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put the full recipe in the description for you. And if you enjoyed my video and you would like to see some future ones, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Otherwise, you could always leave us a like or a comment. And um, please let us know if you've made it and if you've tasted it. So. Good luck and until the next video, bye!